I'm very curious about that jar. Yeah, we're gonna try the jar. <laughs> hey, do you uh do you like whiskey? Yeah. Do you have a whiskey collection? Yeah, I do. Can I see it? Yeah, yeah, right. come with me. I'd say I have a pretty eccentric taste in whiskey. Uh, I'm one of those people where if you present me a bottle of bourbon, if it's over $100, I'm probably not gonna buy it if it's just a bottle of bourbon. But if you're like, hey, this is like a 51% spelt whiskey, I'm like, well. You'll have that. Yeah, I'll buy that from you. Or if someone's like, oh, this is like a 100% oat whiskey with malted oats. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, I gotta try what that tastes like. But if someone's like, oh yeah, this is just a really rare distillery exclusive bottle of bourbon, it's like, you know, it's yeah. how much, you know, it's the same mash bill and it's just aged differently. How much different is it actually gonna be? So. Do you have any uh, organizational sort of methods to hear? So uh, bottom shelf is bourbon. Um, top, middle shelf is our rye or my rye. And then the top shelf is like European, Japanese, anything that won't fit on the other shelves, and then anything weird. We've got this is a rye whiskey from England, and they do different um, different containers that they age it in. We've got a malted rye, one hundred percent from New Riff. This is this is from Sacaponic. It's what if you made a single malt, but it's with potatoes. Uh -huh. So it literally tastes like you're eating potato skins. It's really weird. Uh, a Dutch scotch, uh, a wheat whiskey. On this shelf, kind of like what's... Okay, for our bourbons. Yeah, what's your like um, favorite one out of the bourbons? I, uh, I've i got a couple favorite that I really enjoy. I'm gonna be self a selfless plug. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> really enjoy this one. Garrison Brothers actually so really good. Bourbon? I was like, yeah, I, was, I think I got it for like 95 and I was like, this better be good. It's like, yeah, this is pretty damn good. So <laughs> I have no regrets on it. You know, this is the, uh, you, it's kind of hard to see, but. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's your uh, Elijah Craig? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so how old is it? This is a 19 year Elijah Craig. Holy shit. Cask strength, single barrel, uncut. So they said 130 plus is the proof. How do you get a jar like that? <laughs> Order a lot of barrels. Yeah, oh, That's okay. That's what you gotta do, yeah, yeah. We got this from a uh, from a barrel broker as a thank you for all the barrels that we order. Oh, so they cool. Gave us, we didn't even realize that they were gonna give us this and then they just were like, thank you for being your customer. Yeah, so obviously right. the yeah. Grand Optimist Rye. Grand Optimist Rye. Out of all these strange bottles, what's the one like, that we should try. Oh, we gotta try this one. That one? Yeah. <laughs> try the single spot. If you I kind of want to try that. Let's too. try yeah. that. Yeah. Single spot. I'm just gonna let you fill that. Cheers. Cheers. New York apparently offered like a grant that if you were a farm and you wanted a distillery, that it would help finance that. Yeah. So they are a literal farm distillery where their potato farm in Sacaponic. Yeah. Which they lovingly describe as the most expensive potato farm in the country. The smell on it alone, it smells yeah. like fresh earth. It smells like you're pulling up the potato Ooh. from the ground. Holy shit. I know. I it's not for everyone. Because people are gonna go, you know what? I really don't like that smell. It's like, yeah, well, it's so vegetal and like almost cucumbery. Can you try it? No, I'm so, I gotta go back. What is that? You're getting like maybe a little cherry, a little, I get like uh, cucumber. It's, it's more like subdued than I thought it would be. They may get crazy, but they never stray from balance. Very delicious. Yeah, it's really good. I really, I was not expecting to like that at all. People who like get really snotty about whiskey just feel like they don't really enjoy doing it. Yeah. More of like, they, I, I get the feeling that people who insult lots of whiskeys do it more as a coping mechanism to make themselves seem smarter yeah. than actually being like, I enjoy 
really good whiskeys and really cheap whiskeys and everything in between. Yeah. Stuff that you can never find, stuff that you can always find. Like the people who are only going after like, oh, this is a limited release from like the big Kentucky bourbon. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, there's a lot of whiskey out there and like you chasing down Kentucky distillery, it seems like you're kind of like limiting yourself. It's yeah. it's it's fantastic. It's yeah. it's like 200, 300 years old. Like, <laughs> yeah. It is an established, well-desired flavor, but like, don't come to me and then say you're a bourbon aficionado if all you like is the Buffalo Trace. Yeah. Before, you know? Like, how about uh, trying this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They use virgin French oak, virgin chestnut, straight sherry, and bourbon. Oh yeah, way different than what we just tasted. You get the phenolic fry notes on it that almost, this one has almost like an iodine note to it. Again, like kind of gentle, I'm, yeah, those rye notes are coming. Yeah. Gentle, well-rounded, the oak is coming through. You're getting like that French tannic note on yes. it. Fantastic though. That's also really, really good. Yeah. We'll try this. This looks like molasses. Yes. <laughs> Want to smell it? Yeah. Interesting. There's a lot. Uh... <laughs> I feel like I, I smell a lot of oak. <laughs> <laughs> so you said 19 years? 19 years. That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time. I don't know when they bottled this, but 19 years from now, it's at least 2004 is when it, at Holy least. Holy shit. All right. Let's try this 19 year old. Hmm. It's hard to describe. It's funky. It tastes like blue cheese. Yes, it's got that like almost. Um, that's blue cheese. Oh, that's weird. Like gorgonzola. <laughs> gorgonzola, almost like uh, ammonium note to it. It also tastes like like a grandma's basement. Yeah, it's gonna be musky. It's. I mean, it's above one thirty. What do you want from you know like? It doesn't drink like one thirty necessarily no. though. The the one thing that I would remark that I. Uh, I'm torn about, and I wish, you know, it's not their fault, but like the body on it is so light. It's super light, yeah. For 19 year, 130, I was expecting a little bit more oomph to it, just mm -hmm. to like pick it up. But for like what this was, it's like, wow, this is like a lot. Like it's big, bold notes, but it's not complete whiskey. Yeah. This is like a very good example of like an incomplete whiskey, Yeah, I would say. It's, I mean, it's very interesting. Like I don't think I've had Anything that tastes like I could say blue cheese, but yeah, blue cheese basement. Blue cheese basement. I mean, but in the best way. In the best way, like yeah, yeah, yeah. fast and, and it also tastes like whiskey, so yeah. it's like that. But All right. Should we, should we try some Grand Optimist? You gotta try some. You gotta be a Grand Optimist if you wanna open up a distillery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. I like the color on it. It's a one year at the lowest. We've got a couple two years in here, but we use a couple 15 gallons. So 15 gallons age faster. Um, so it's a one year. It's 95 proof. I like mine higher. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we uh, this will make the best old fashions yes. you've ever had. Ooh. But the taste is there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Chocolate, well, espresso, hazelnut. That's what we were going for because we're so close to the ocean, we get salinity in our barrels. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's like a heavy coffee kind of situation yeah. happening. So we wanted to do like a chocolate, caramel, sea salt, sort mm -hmm. of like saltwater taffy going on. That makes sense for an old fashioned too to like, should we finish on some garrison? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> have it. It's just, it's really damn good bourbon. You're gonna, Obviously, you're going to do your highest seller, but I, was, I I feel like it's we actually had someone come in because they watched the documentary. And so yeah. they came into the bottle shop. Yeah, that was really weird. He was from like North Carolina and he had a daughter out in Montauk. He's like, well, I'm going to stop. Better man. And he yeah. got 
he was so geeked out. <laughs> oh yeah, he was, he was great. He was a really nice guy. That's the ideal situation. That's yeah. like more and more people are making craft cocktails at home. And when you start making craft cocktails, you realize rye is a better whiskey for cocktails than bourbon. Bourbon's great for sipping. That's what it was made for. Uh, and TikTok. I give some credit to TikTok. TikTok is definitely helpful. Like, I the, Thirsty Whale. Thirsty Whale, yeah. God, I, I, I want to break him down here. Hey, I, if you're seeing this, <laughs> swing by in Long Island, right? On Long Island. Cheers. I done a little research on this. I was originally a Cicerone, which is like the beer equivalent for a small yay. <laughs> Um, so the part of your brain that deals with smell is also really close linked to memory. And that's why smells trigger memories is because if you think of the wild, you go out, you smell a fruit, you remember if it caused you to be sick or if you enjoyed tasting it. So you stay alive. You stay alive. So like, that's why we have this very strong, that's why certain smells and memories like cinnamon or coffee can trigger certain memories that you have. However, the part of your brain that deals with oral communication is completely separate <laughs> from the part of your brain that deals with smells. Interesting. So you are able, you're like, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I know it. And then someone says the word and you go, yes, that's what it is. So a person who's a professional snifter does not mean that they are good at identifying the flavors in the context of what they personally achieve, mm -hmm. but they are good at identifying and conveying those flavors to you because we all are like, I know this, I yeah. know this, I know this, but I don't know how to say it. And my favorite is people will say, well, Peter, how do I know you're just not like pulling my leg and saying like, oh, this is, this is like, now you smell it. It's like, well, do you get any espresso notes from it? Oh, right, you can say no or yes. No, so, I don't yeah. get any espresso. Well, there you go. Like, yeah. I, I just said it smelled like espresso, yeah. and you're like, I'm not getting espresso. Yeah. But oatmeal, I get like, like. You're not, they're not like Honey Nut Cheerios, the one that's sticking out to me the most. Full bodied, sweet. Opposite of what it smells like. Yeah. Or not opposite, different, like... So different. It's so weird that the nose and how something tastes can be, like, so far apart. I was so pleasantly surprised with this. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of my favorite because it's the expectations were so low. Yeah. And the result was so high that I was... Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's what you go for when you're hunting, you know? A lot of people who are bourbon drinkers love Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So when you're a craft distillery and then come to your distillery, they'll say, this doesn't taste like Kentucky bourbon. And then if you are a distillery that tries to make just uh, bourbon that tastes like Kentucky bourbon, they will say it tastes close, but it's not Kentucky bourbon. And at the end of the day, they are going to drink their Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. So why am I trying to make a bourbon for a person who is going to turn around and say, well, this is good, but this doesn't taste like plants. It sounds like you already know what, what you want. want. I want to make this for someone who's like, well, what they're making in Kentucky isn't my favorite. I want to try something else. Mm -hmm. And that's the person I'm trying to appeal to. Yeah.